Hello, today I'm going to tell you about this 1910 Aero Collar Advertising Illustration by J.C. Leindecker. Leindecker's illustration depicts two men, a woman and a collie, relaxing together on the steps of an outdoor porch of what is probably a golf clubhouse since both men hold bags of clubs. The woman and the dog leaning on her as she pets it are the central figures, but the men in front of her are the focus, stoically posed as they gaze at each other. The men and even the women depicted wear sharp collars. This illustration is one of the many that Leyendecker did over the years for Cluet, Peabody, and Co. to advertise their arrow detachable shirt collars. The innovation of this collar allowed men to have a crisp collar all day long, a fresh collar able to be attached for evening social events. The men who wore these collars in Leyendecker's ads came to be known as the arrow collar man, or rather men in this particular 1910 illustration. They are clearly handsome and well-dressed, sporting exceptional poise, posture, and athletically proportioned bodies. The Arrowman was modeled after Charles Beach, Leindecker's lifetime partner. His partner's likeness would come to be a romantic object to women, who sent tons of fan mail and even marriage proposals to the fictional figure. He also served as a role model for men, who would line up to buy the latest styles, trying to channel the smartly dressed men depicted in Leindecker's illustrations. Through his arrow collar ads, Leindecker raised sales for the company to over $32 million per year. Given that Leindecker was gay, there have been many interpretations of his work that claim he is inferring homosexuality, and Leindecker's 1910 ad is no exception. The blonde man on the left wears a red necktie, which was a coded signal for homosexuality among gay men of New York since the late 1890s. The blonde sits with his legs open, his gaze heavily lidded, as the man on the right looks back at him. How the blonde clutches the bag of golf clubs can also be interpreted as suggestive. For mainstream consumption, it is plausible that the depiction of the two men is just that of a close male friendship, which allowed for a greater measure of physical and emotional expressiveness than is the norm today. In a time where homosexuality was far from accepted, none of Leindecker's illustrations sparked homophobic outrage. One of the things I particularly love about Leindecker is his painting style, which features idealized figures painted with unique cross-hatched brushstrokes. One can see the Impressionist influence with these wide, deliberate strokes evident in everything from the man's dress shirt to the dog's fur. Like Benjamin West and other American painters after him, Leindecker went to Europe to further develop his skills. He studied at Académie Julian in Colossari in Paris, in which he was taught not to copy the model, but instead to use it as a guide to creating a classical ideal. These te teaching res resonated with Leindecker, who drew idealist figures and would go on to draw the ideal male in the Arrow Man. He refused to use photographic reference, preferring to interpret from life, and would make all his preliminary drawings and color paintings directly from the models. He would then set up a canvas and paint his final, based on all his sketches and color paintings. He seldom overpainted, and like in many of his pieces, the background for his 1910 arrowhead is simple, bringing focus to the fashionable figures in the foreground. After Leindecker's enormously successful arrow campaign, Leindecker went on to create many more successful advertising campaigns and created many covers for national magazines. He created 322, more than any other illustrator, for the Saturday Evening Post. His illustrations were a huge influence on, Rock, on Norman Rockwell, and he continues to inspire illustrators to this day. Okay.